Greetings. My name is Sean Jones, and I work at Los Alamos National Laboratory as a member of the Research Library prototyping team, along with my, uh, my boss, Martin Klein. I'm also a PhD student at Old Dominion University and a member of the Web Science and Digital Libraries Research Group. I want to thank IMLS for funding part of this research. And today I'm going to talk about Sherry, an integration of tools to visualize a story of the day. And this really is a collaboration between me and Alexander Nawala, bringing a bunch of tools together in, 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 in a novel and, and interesting way. Now, every 10 minutes, StoryGraph gathers RSS feeds from 17 news sources to produce JSON that represents the current news as a graph. And so we see this JSON on the right, and there's a ton of information in here that could be processed by machines. But it's very difficult for a human to get the gist, get the idea of what's really going on. Now, the largest connected component in this graph, which is embodied in this JSON, is the biggest story of the day. And the news stories that are in this JSON, the news sources, sorry, in this JSON come from the left, right, and middle parts of the U.S. political spectrum. And so we have the, the list here on the left of where these particular news sources um, fall. So Alexander Nawala also produced a tool that visualizes this JSON as connected components of sources. And so we can see the actual graph. And so each source is represented by a node, which is pictured as its, its icon, and the edges indicate that there is a connection, that these two particular sources are covering the same story. And the largest connected component is the biggest story of the day. So if we see a particularly large set of edges and nodes, we know that that, that is a big news story. And so Alexander Nawala recently added the ability to see the titles of the news story that you have selected on the graph. And this is, this is an amazing way to I interact with news and, and do some analysis, but it takes some trial and error and a little bit of training in order to really understand how to use this properly. So in order to make something that was easier for people to just glance at and really get an idea of what was going on, we developed Sherry. Now, Sherry visualizes the largest connected component with cards and images common to social media storytelling. And so you see cards and images for March 23rd, 2020, where we have some additional information that's brought in that gives us an idea of the actual story of this day, which was the COVID-19 pandemic. And we see this beautiful striking image of Boris Johnson talking to the UK about what they're going to do about the pandemic. We also have images, titles, and other elements that are typically found on or cards like in places like uh, Facebook or, or Google News to give us some idea of the sources and um, provide us some summaries of the individual articles. And Sherry combines several components from ODU's WSDL group. It is StoryGraph Hypercane Archive Now Raintail Integration. And so we see that Hypercane produces an image report that gives us the striking image on the top. Hypercane also produces an entity report giving us a list of entities. And it's able to use some grams, which I'll cover later, in order to produce a list of phrases that come from these articles. It also orders the mementos of these particular news articles by publication date. And if there are no mementos available of those particular news articles, it creates them. Hypercane creates them with Archive Now. And the whole thing is rendered by Raintail. So StoryGraph provides the input to this process, and Raintail produces the visualization. Now, StoryGraph is a collection of tools that analyze the news cycle. Like I said, every 10 minutes, StoryGraph queries the RSS feeds of 17 different news sources. 
and that then extracts a variety of information including titles, text, fav icons, article links, publication dates, named entities, and it uses similarity metrics to compute the strength between two articles to see if they're covering the same story. And if the similarity threshold if the similarity is above a given threshold, then the two articles are talking about the same story and we can see where the individual sources are beginning to clump in the graph. And these connected components are the news stories. And so we can see in the upper left-hand corner that particular graph has a lot of sources all covering the same story. Whereas on the bottom, there's very few sources that are covering the same story. And so the, they're, they're all covering diverse topics for that particular uh, 10 minutes. Now, Hypercane provides for intelligent sampling of web archive collections. It converts from time map URITs and extracts the mementos from them so that you get URIMs. It can convert from URIRs to URIMs, and it can go from URIMs to find the URITs. It uses the memento protocol to find all of these memento protocol objects. It also can provide reports on collection metadata, named entities, terms, and images that are found in the mementos that are fed into it. It can synthesize mementos into works and other formats. It can cluster and filter mementos. It can score them by function and order them by feature. Hypercane is able to do a lot more than what we use it for in Sherry. But it is key to making this whole process work. Now, Hypercane only works in lists of of, of memento identifiers like URIMs and URIRs and then converts into the appropriate identifier for the task at hand. Archive Now is a tool to push web, ar web resources into web archives. Archive Now converts live web resources into mementos by preserving them. It takes care of all the weird idiosyncrasies between the different save page now capabilities of different archives. The Internet Archive is supported, as is Archive Today. Archive ST is also supported, which is not the same as Archive Today. We also uh, Archive Now also supports Megalodon and PermaCC. And Hypercane can call it, it calls it as a library. So Archive Now, even though we're looking at it here as a web service in, in a form, it, it is you can call it as a library as well. And that's how Hypercane is able to do some of these conversions we talked about in the previous slide. Now, Raintail answers the question of what story will you tell with web archives? It can generate social media stories for mementos. It publishes them to different file formats like HTML, or it can publish them to social media services like Twitter. I have an example here of a Twitter thread. And Raintail also supports templates for custom output. So you can customize the way things look, like on the right where I was trying to see how well bootstrap cards would work with the output from various mementos. Now, Sherry Step 1 queries story graph for the URIRs belonging to the biggest story of the day. It uses story graph toolkit to get this list. I only show you one URIR here, but you get the idea. It, it essentially just gets a list of links that belong to that largest connected component. Now, Sherry Step 2 leverages Archive Now to create URIMs from URIRs. And it does so through Hypercane's identify command, which is able to convert from one particular memento object into another. And so we see that at the top, we have a live web resource of this New York Times article, and on the bottom it has a, a um, an, arc, an Internet Archive banner. Sherry Strep 3 is where we generate a list of entities from these mementos and order them by frequency. So we get a list of mementos that come from a particular URIM, or a list of URIMs, and then we get information like the entity, the probability in corpus, the document frequency, and so on. In Sherry Step 4, we generate a list of sumgrams, cojoined n-grams, or phrases, if you will, from the mementos and order them by frequency. And Hypercane does this with its terms report.
and it leverages some gram, which is another tool developed by Alexander Nawala, in order to produce these phrases. And then it gives us a report that indicates the frequency in cor corpus and the term rate. And if you have additional questions about uh, some grams, I invite you to talk to Alexander Nawala. Shari Step 5 reports metrics on all the images in all the mementos. And I'm just, I'm just showing you one here just so you can see that these different images appear on this page. However, um, we're also gathering information like, was it present in the page metadata? How large is it in terms of pixels? How many colors does it have? What is its ratio of width to height? And what is its position in HTML? And we use this information in order to try to determine the striking image for the overall story. But we'll get to that in a moment. In Sherry Step 6, we sort all the mementos in the story. I only show four here uh, for this particular story. By, but we sort them by publication date time. And we do this because in the eventual story, we want them to proceed in the order in which the events occurred. In Sherry Step 7, we generate rain, a rain tail JSON file, a JSON file that is suitable for input into Raintail. Hypercane can do this as well. And at this particular point, Hypercane uses that image report to discover the highest scoring image, which becomes the striking image for the story. It also takes the information of the order of mementos and makes sure that that is maintained, and it ensures that the um, it ensures that the, the sum grams and entities and other things are represented. In Sherry Step 8, we take the Raintail JSON and also a Sherry template, and those become inputs to Raintail. And Raintail does the additional heavy lifting to actually render the story as a Jekyll HTML file. For each memento, it processes information based or it queries memento embed for information about the mementos that are listed in the, the, the story and then produces cards based off of what the template asks it to render. In step nine, we take that Jekyll HTML file and then we publish it to GitHub Pages. Because Jekyll is the format that is used by GitHub Pages in order to render its web pages. And as an extra step, we advertise via Twitter using the Stormy Archives Twitter feed that this particular story is available. So you see here from the Sherry process, StoryGraph bots biggest news story for yesterday, Sunday, May 31st, 2020. And we put the sumgrams in the tweets along with their frequency. And this particular day, the story of the day was about the George about George Floyd and then the the fact that he was killed um and 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 the 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 issues that came out of that. And so we can see easily what the story of the day is. We also ensured that the actual story itself would produce a, a very nice card, including the striking image of the overall story and the title and other things. So that people would look at it on Twitter and, and come visit it. So this is the overall Sherry process. We move from the StoryGraph service in step one, uh, where we're using the StoryGraph toolkit, through Hypercane, which does a, 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 a lot of different processing, you know, converting the URIRs from StoryGraph Toolkit into URIMs, which are then fed into an, uh, Hypercane to produce entity report or sumgram report or an image report, and then ordered by publication date. And then all of these reports are then consolidated again by Hypercane in order to produce the JSON, which becomes input to Raintail for the story of the day. Raintail also takes in a template, and it uses Memento Embed to gather information about the individual mementos that are mentioned in the JSON, and then finally produces a Jekyll HTML file, which is then published to GitHub Pages. We can do neat things with this. 
For instance, we can compare the biggest story each day with the same day each year. Such as on August 8, 2017, when StoryGraph was first brought into service. The largest story of the day was nuclear provocation by North Korea. One year later, the largest story of the day is about U.S. primaries and special elections. And still one year after that, the largest news story is about the aftermath of shootings at El Paso and Dayton. And so a historian can go back and look at the stories or produce a story for a given day, assuming it was produced after StoryGraph uh, came out, but any day after August 8, 2017, and see what was important to the news cycle at that particular day. And so you'll see that none of these mention COVID-19 because it nobody knew about it yet. But COVID-19 seems to be the running story a lot of days recently. And we publish all these stories to, uh, uh, to GitHub pages, but we do so at the DSA Puddles website. And Sherry is the first combination of these storytelling tools to publish to DSA Puddles. However, the Dark and Stormy Archives project focuses on summarizing, summarizing all different types of web archive collections. So this is just the, Sherry is just the first instance of this. We've also run Alnomani's algorithm, which is implemented in Hypercane, against this novel coronavirus collection at, at Archivit, which was uh, produced by the, the IAPC. And we produced this beautiful story, which gives somebody an idea of what's in the collection without having to go through the thousands of documents in the collection. You can get to the DSA Puddles, Puddles website through this particular link. Now, recently for our Sherry stories, we made some improvements, such as to counter the ability of some grams to form unintended sentences, we've attached frequencies to each. Now, this was an interesting scenario. Some grams, if you separate them by commas, read as sentences if the grammar works out properly. We discovered this one day when the terms a Vice President Mike Pence, comma, has contracted COVID-19, comma, um, were all run together and only separated by the one comma. Thus, we were concerned that this was misleading users because the particular uh, sentence, you know, was implying something that wasn't true. So we separate them with the frequency counts in order to try to break up the sentences or the, the, the sentences that could be constructed from these phrases. The other thing that's nice about the uh, term counts is that they give you an idea of the strength of that particular sumgram in the collection. In this particular, uh, for this particular Sherry story about John Lewis, John Lewis is clearly, uh, nine articles talk about John Lewis. So there's clearly a strong affinity for John Lewis in this particular story. Now, each entity that's listed that came out of that entity report from Hypercane links to its Wikipedia page or a disambiguation page. The striking image selection now comes from images that are referenced by authors in their own metadata instead of us just processing all images that are linked by all the pages in the story. This provides much better uh, results when it comes to the striking image. And the clustering of stories favors the graphs that last the longest in a given day over those that are the biggest. And Alexander Nawala can explain this better, but graphs, the graphs that last the longest tend to cover a larger portion of the day, whereas those that are the biggest indicate a huge spike in, uh, in a news story for the day. And sometimes these are the same and sometimes they're not. So we favor this model over the other. In the future, we want to do additional visualizations for stories that span many days or even months, like the COVID-19 pandemic. We could do stories with a particular political bias and then compare the coverage of right versus left for the, their biggest story of the day. We could do stories from a particular locale if we change the inputs to, from StoryGraph. We could extend StoryGraph beyond the date of August 8th, 2017 and do things like I'm showing on the right. 
On the right, we have news stories for September 1st, 2005, discussing the Hurricane Katrina aftermath. How do we sherry this? How do we sherry 9-11? But also interesting is how do we sherry the less interesting times? How do we produce a the biggest story of the day for April 2nd, 2005? I don't know what happened on that day. We could find out. And we could do this by crawling the news sources and web archives and discovering articles at a specific time period and then using the story graph algorithm, not the service, on these mementos directly and then analyzing the graphs to find the biggest stories. Alexander Nawal and I are excited to try to bring this to, to, to light, but we haven't done so yet. And this is mentioned in the tech report that is linked to on the bottom here uh, on archive. And in summary, Sherry combines these ODU WSDL tools to create a visualization of the biggest story of the day. Storygraph, Hypercane, Archive Now, and Raintail. And it produces a familiar yet novel method of viewing the biggest news story for a given day. And it can create stories for today, yesterday, and all the way back to Storygraph's launch date of August 8, 2017. And the Sherry process provides a visualization of articles that are not tied to one interest area or political perspective. Remember that Storygraph samples from many different sources on different sides of the political spectrum. And it works because each component has loose coupling, high cohesion, explicit interfaces, and information hiding. In short, GitHub Pages doesn't need to know anything about how Storygraph works. Ringtail doesn't need to know that its output is going to be used by GitHub Pages. Hypercane just knows that it's producing reports from mementos. And Archive Now just knows that it has to convert URIRs into URIMs. It doesn't need to know that, it that the URIRs came from Storygraph. More information on all, all of this is available in the tech report that is, av is available at the uh, archive.org link on the bottom here. Thank you.